Welcome to Signal Soundbites, and for the very last time, I am Brandon <laughs> Reese Pena, editor in chief of the Signal, and on this special 50th episode of the podcast, the tables have turned. Uh, I am used to being in the driver's seat and asking the questions, but this go around, I will be answering the questions from this esteemed panel, who are consistent, who which consists of. Hi guys, I'm Emily Wolf. I am the executive editor of The Signal. Hello everybody. I am Trillin Griffin II, managing editor of The Signal and longtime colleague of Brandon. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this podcast and I'm kind of mourning it. Um, and last but not least, um, I'm Melissa, the online editor. Can I just say that I love that it took... 50 episodes to finally get that panel on introductions like just kind of good just like kind of right <laughs> like there wasn't like this long excessive pause <laughs> waiting for someone to jump in because originally we said in order <laughs> i kind of see Brandon's face when we have to like read him these Here, questions i'll show you my face I just originally we were just like just freshly hello hello i put my camera on so i'm really excited I'm glad we've gotten this down. Originally, we were fresh killed chickens, but now we are seasoned <laughs> and we've got experience. Oh, Lord. I have one of those two things. <laughs> All right. So I think you guys established an order. It's going to be Emily, Troilin, and Alyssa. Fire away. So, pew, pew. If you could unpublish one of your articles, which one would it be? Oof. Um, so, <laughs> I guess if I had to unpublish one, but I got to keep the recognition for it, it would be the very first uh, <laughs> published thing that I did for The Signal, which was an editorial. Uh, it was about the Confederate flag. Um, I did win a national award for that uh, particular uh, piece, However, I did not necessarily agree with the stance I kind of had to write uh, because it was an editorial, which an editorial, for those who are listening and don't know, uh, is basically the stance of the paper. Um, I didn't necessarily agree with the stance that was being written about. So if I had to unpublish one thing, it would definitely be probably that. <laughs> That's what I thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> which is funny because it's like it's the very first thing I've ever read for the, re written for The Signal. And it won you a national award. And it won me a national freaking award. First place. <laughs> I know it's too late, but didn't I say, like, your last thing should be, like, a rebuke of that? Not, like, don't call yourself out. <laughs> yeah. But, like, the exact same prompt. Like, Probably. Argue. Maybe I'll put that in my blog. It's like a little throw in a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Trillin. All right. I got my little notebook here that Brandon got me, I think, last year. Yeah, last year. And I've written a few questions. So I tried to keep these clean, but let's yeah. get on with it. Okay, I'm not going to ask this first one. Okay, so here is my question. What do you personally feel has made you one of the Signal's best editors slash editors-in-chiefs? Or do you even think, do you consider yourself one of the best? I, I, I can't consider myself one of the best just because I I don't, I mean, the Signal, let's, first off, used to be called the Euclidean. Uh, this student newspaper has been around for like 40-something years, so... I've obviously have not been around for 40 something years. So I can't speak to what other editors have done. Um, I think I've done a pretty good job of leading overall. Um, but I don't necessarily, I can't necessarily say I'm the best at it. <laughs> it would be great to be recognized as that. I mean, that'd be awesome. Uh, but I can't, I guess, call myself the best editor. You're the yeah. best editor I've had. Well, thank you. I agree. And I think that's going to be, I think that's probably like one of the interesting things about just being in this position is that uh, you're, every person's different. And so whenever you step into the role, 
there's going to be a different leadership style. And so my leadership style is different from the person before me. And the person that was before me's leadership style was different than the person before them. Uh, and that just is the kind of thing that's going to happen, you know, regardless. And that's part of why the paper continues to be what it is today, because there is an evolution of, you know, the people running it and the people who are, you know, overseeing it um, and leading it. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, editor. I got a two-parter. Oh. Um, <laughs> hey, um, what do you feel is a, a misunderstanding uh, that you feel is the biggest misunderstanding people have about the signal um, from the outside looking in? And what do you think is the biggest misunderstanding, not mis yeah, misunderstanding, misinterpretation of what it means to be um, part of it from, like, the people um, that are looking to join. Um, I think what I think is probably the biggest misconception is that the signal is kind of like this group of just misfits who are trying to just take down an institution or something or just, like, always has their pitchforks ready. I think that's probably the biggest misconception uh, because <laughs> no, we're not. Um, I quit <laughs> <laughs> because of the things that we publish and the things that we spotlight. I think people can get that idea, um, but having been in it for you know four and a half years and seeing how these stories develop and and how we get to these uh, you know editorials and you know news stories and all that stuff. It's not like that. If they were to sit in these meetings, they would, I think, understand that we are coming from a place of concern and a place of wanting to make things better. Uh, not just for us, it's for everybody. It's for future students, it's for current students. Um, and I don't think we kind of walk around with this idea that there's always a big bad. Um, and I think that maybe the misconception is that we are kind of playing this role of hero um, when our job is really just to spotlight things and to make things easier for the public to consume and then decide on their own what it is, you know, that they're interpreting from it. Um, you know, not everything is rainbows and butterflies. I think, you know, when it comes to UHCL, there's a lot of good, but also with the good, there's a lot of things that do need you know, solutions and things that need to be fixed and things that need to be, you know, more in a conversation. And I think when you post something on like social media, you know, whether it's you know, promoting one of our articles or sending out through emails and stuff, you know, you tend to get messages of like, well, that's a stretch or that's a, you know, that's a little ridiculous or whatever it is that the person is saying. Um, but they're seeing it from an outside perspective. So that's probably the biggest misconception, I think, is that people think that we are just out to get people when that's not the case. <laughs> like we have a villain of the week. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like we're the Scooby-Doo gang and we're just out to get people. Like that's not that's not how we operate. <laughs> um, and what was your other – it was like misconceptions about – for. Maybe joining the staff, join the staff. If you are interested, I think people probably who probably want to join the staff may think that we're I don't know uh, not approachable. I guess I, I guess that's probably like a misconception, um, or that we're not flexible because I think we we definitely are. We're definitely a group of people who are willing to help, uh, even if you have no experience at all. That's a lot. That's too bad. <laughs> um, you know, you have you know, no experience at all, you are still able to join and be a part of our team and we will work with you. Um, I think that may be something that's scary to some people who definitely uh, would want to join but aren't necessarily sure about it, um, is not knowing if there would be welcomed or uh, maybe their experience lacks because they you know, haven't taken journalism or something like that. Um, but I can tell you that we had had plenty of people on staff who have been super <laughs> successful in writing, you know, journalism and doing journalism stuff, uh, you know, and just 
doing graphics and like Alyssa is one of those people like Alyssa you have you know I raised my hand too soon I didn't know you were going to say like a specific skill no yeah like Alyssa like you you came in on our staff as the online editor but you come from like an art background and so you bring a very unique perspective to things that we wouldn't necessarily have if you weren't on staff you know when it comes to doing our graphics when it comes to doing our featured images and things like that just the overall layout of things you have a very specific perspective of it you know when it comes to someone like Jessica Kunzat she's one of uh, she's our live uh, reporting coordinator she comes from a math background and she turns out some of the best you know works uh, when it comes to articles and it surprises me how great of a writer she is because of the background that she does come from which isn't necessarily communication so I think that if there's anybody who thinks that you know just because you're not a comm major uh, that you can't join the signal you definitely can there's a place for you we will work with you and just kind of develop even if it's just as a hobby you know if you just want to you know try it out uh, just for fun I think that's definitely something they should consider so yeah who was the worst person you like what was the worst interview you had <laughs> Ooh, okay um, let's think about this so keep in mind, I've been on staff for about four and a half years, so I have to, I have to really think about that. I think... <laughs> name names. <laughs> I don't know if I can name names. Well, I mean, I guess I can on my way out anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, just kidding. No, there was one, I would say, uh, that was just uh, very uncomfortable uh, because of the sort of racial tones uh, the racism that the undertones of that uh, interaction were very unsettling. Um, it was a person. It was, uh, I would say, uh, <laughs> <Good. laughs> it definitely was a person. Uh, you know that was that works for the university, still works for the university, um, and is in the upper uh, core of that. I wouldn't say the core leadership, but definitely somewhere in the. It's definitely a person that people would interact with and know. Um, and they just started and I had to do the interview and when they opened with, uh, hola and they're not a, you know, first off, it shouldn't really matter what color they are. Um, but just to be addressed that way, it's kind of insulting because they just kind of look at your skin and they look at your name, uh, and they just assume something about you. Um, and then to further use Spanglish, uh, as this particular person did to, you know, usher me into their office was very, uh, uncomfortable, especially with that interview, which was already going to be a tough interview to begin with. Uh, so yeah, definitely wasn't uh, a favorite <laughs> of mine. Was that the one you got kicked out of? That is the one that I was ushered out of their office pretty, pretty quickly and given some veiled threats. So that was fun. <laughs> All part of the job, I guess. <laughs> Troyland. <laughs> My turn. Okay, so this is an interesting question. Um, as you have figured out, at least for my first question, this these questions of mine are really going to involve a lot of self-reflection. And I don't just mean recalling incidents, but just thinking about you in general. Mm -hmm. And this question is, okay, with context. Um, as editor-in-chief, but even before you were editor-in-chief, you know, you have always been kind of the person that many of us have felt that we can come to, like, you know, for very personal issues and stuff like that. And, you know, someone that we really do trust, you know? What do you think it is about yourself that makes you someone that so many, you know, people come to and feel that, you know, they can trust you and just be someone that can talk things out and all with you. Well, that's very nice. And then, I mean, it is nice that people think that and do that. Um, I don't know. I think I just, I try to always have a attitude of do unto others as you want undone to you. Um, and just trying to lead with kindness. It's not always easy, that's for sure. Um, especially when you're in, in a work environment, there's a bunch of stresses and, you know, you know, school and personal life stuff on top of that, it's very difficult, um, to do, but I think 
I don't know. I guess it's just my personality of just trying to always be honest and open to people. I'm very compassionate just by nature. I get that from my grandma. <laughs> so I don't know. I just, I know the struggles that I've been through and I don't, you know, ever want someone else to feel that way because they um, are maybe being ignored or being not heard. Um, so I don't know. I think that's just, that's just how I've always been. I don't know. <laughs> and you're always like super helpful. I think like, I know if I come to you with a problem then you're going to like actually put in the time and effort and energy to help me like figure out what to do. Yeah. Um, whereas like, other people will be like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that you've always, but... like, you always have, you come up with a genuine solution, you know? And, like, I like how, you know, you don't ever seem, you never seem bothered to help somebody, you know? Or, you know, it doesn't seem like you're like, okay, I'm helping you because I want you to get back to work. It seems like you're helping because you genuinely want that person to, you know, feel better and everything. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I always, that's just how I've always kind of operated with because I know from personal experience what it's like to, you know, reach out for help or to ask for help and kind of just be pushed aside or ignored. And it's not a comfortable feeling. And, um, you know, to be able to help someone who, even if the matter is small, like I've lost my keys or I can't find my phone, like... <laughs> I, I don't know. I think I just I just have a helpful nature in me, and I just try to always, you know, make things just a little bit easier for someone to have a better day. What was the biggest mistake you ever made while in the newsroom? Hmm. Oh, there's one. Well, I mean, it wasn't a, mis it wasn't a mistake, but it hurt like hell. Uh, Emily, <laughs> you were there for this one. I was <laughs> I was sitting in a chair and I leaned too far forward and the chair escaped from me <laughs> and I fell flat on my ass and it hurt like hell and Emily comes and at this point like me and Emily hadn't really talked like we were like <laughs> she worked for the wingspan I worked for the signal she was on the other side of the room like we never really interacted and she walked over <laughs> and she just looks down at me and she's like are you okay? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Even though like I'm like fully red. <laughs> Cause it was so embarrassing. Oh God, the people at the signal were so weird. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I think it was just like me and her at that time in the room. Like she was working on her stuff. I was working on my stuff. And she just walks around like, are you good? <laughs> okay. What people don't know is that I'm literally like the least like the person you want least in a situation where you're injured because <laughs> I have like no empathy. Yay. Like, like, okay. like, so I was awkward and <laughs> totally forgot about that. I think that was like one of our first interactions. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was too. I was like, oh, okay. It's like, <laughs> hi, this is the start of a great friendship. <laughs> it was. <laughs> we didn't speak for six more months. No. <laughs> What would you say is the hardest part of being someone's boss, whether it be you being the boss of us or people in the media production class? Okay, so I'm the type of person, I I thrive on being liked. <laughs> I like being liked. Uh, and so I think the hard part is whenever you kind of have to like lay down the law a bit or like be a little like stern and say like, no, this this is the way it's going to go. This way it has to happen. Uh, that's always hard because it's like, you know, you're probably pissing someone off on the other end of that conversation. Um, and you're like, well, shit. <laughs> this person's probably not going to like me anymore. Uh, so that's, I think, probably the hardest part is because you don't necessarily want to, like, well, at least I don't necessarily want to isolate people uh, in that way. But also, that's part of the job if you want to get things done is you kind of have to lead sometimes a little harsher and be like well that's fine the way you're thinking of doing it but this is how it has to be um so that can be a little a little uncomfortable um but yeah that's probably it well this leads into part two of my question <laughs> okay <laughs> and that is and that is 
Uh, when it comes to people on staff, what are some memorable incidences, incidents where you might have thought this person's going to be mad at me for what I have to do? Hmm. Let's see. <laughs> how much this time do we? Every day. How much time <laughs> do we? My first one of my. I think it was actually my first meeting. I, I said something like, "I'm going to basically take away uh, writing reviews uh, as like a main assignment." Uh, just because at that point, writing a review didn't necessarily equal the same amount of weight as someone else writing like an editorial or like a commentary, because those like require more research and all that. Um, it apparently, wasn't very favorable <laughs> to people, um, and so I mean, I already knew that going in. That was probably going to be like one of the biggest gripes that people had. Um, also, Google Forms. Apparently, that's a big thing people were not fans of. <laughs> Uh, but it made my life a lot easier, so it was great. <laughs> um, what else? What are some other things? I know that, uh, I mean, I'm sure there's, there's, there's some every day, honestly. I mean, whether it's big stuff or small stuff, uh, getting people to, like, do their editorials has always been a tough thing. Uh, I guess Monday meetings are probably, like, the biggest days when this typically happens, when you have to sit down and review okay, well, this wasn't turned in, this wasn't done on time, this wasn't, you know, where's the status of this? Why isn't it done? Why didn't you do this? Like, asking those questions, like, you already know going in, you're probably going to piss someone off. Uh, and you just got to roll with it, because at the end of the day, it's part of your job um, to do these things and also for them to do their things. That way you don't have to ask those questions. And so it's just a whole thing. Uh, that's typically where most of the most of that comes from. <laughs> I always thought you were super nice about them. I try to be. <laughs> like you're a lot nicer than I would have been. I think I, I try to approach it nicely, like the first time, and then the second time, and then after a while, when it's just there's just so much that goes on, it's like okay, I can't be nice anymore because that's not helping the situation. <laughs> anymore uh so yeah that's basically that's probably where I, where I would say okay I know it'll it might take a while if I say everyone on staff so let's just go with the people here today on panel oh. when it comes to each of us <laughs> or as I like to call us T T E A <laughs> how would you say each of us has impacted you okay so uh, well, with Troilin, um, it's definitely probably been uh, just this sort of youthfulness uh, that I guess I kind of didn't fully experience. Because, like, whenever I was your age and I was in college, I didn't really interact with my fellow peers because uh, I was very focused on like my studies and I was very reserved. Um, and so whenever you came to the signal, you kind of brought this sort of fresh perspective of how you see the world and how you see things. Um, that was sort of something that I hadn't really like thought of. You think outside the box, you think beyond what, you know, is basically the focus of the moment. You think very broadly and that shows like in your story ideas and stuff. Uh, so I think that's definitely probably something that I've, I've kind of gotten from you is sort of thinking beyond just the, the main aspect of things. So with Alyssa, it's definitely been nice to get someone who has a perspective that's sort of similar to mine when it comes to like looking at things and like, like news and stuff like that. Um, and also she comes from a very artistic background, so the way she appreciates art and the way that she sees things visually has definitely been influential the way I can see things. And I think that's very cool uh, because I can look at a piece of art and be like, oh, that's fascinating. But then to see her like actually go through the process of making it and making these designs and making these like just starting from scratch, it's like it's very inspiring to see like this is someone's passion, someone's, you know, gift that they're able to do. And 
to be able to create something, even if it's just for fun, just to do it is great. And I think we also have very similar work ethics. So that's also been great to like feed off of as well, because we're very much to people who like to grab a lot of balloons <laughs> and take care of a lot of big, different things at one time. So this is true. So, <laughs> yeah. So I think that the, that's been out kind of a cool thing to have is like someone else who's like very much like that as well. Oh, with Emily. <laughs> I'm a little worried about this okay. one. So with Emily, <laughs> I definitely have appreciated the fact that we share a lot in common, which I didn't think yeah, was possible. Because <laughs> on the outside, when you look at us, it's like there's no way these two people have so much in common. There's no way these two people like the same things, think very similarly. Like there's no way. But we do, and so it's been nice to kind of have like that kindred spirit <laughs> to, to always like like did, can you believe this? Can you, did you hear this? Did you see this? And like having that you know person who is very similar to you, uh, but not in like an annoying twin way, <laughs> but but like in a way that's like okay, like we like very similar things. We have very similar opinions and ideas of stuff, um, and that's very much what. I've enjoyed and that's gonna so leaving the signal in general is hard on its own because it's you know just sort of like the the time and the effort you put into it but I think a lot of it's gonna stem from you know not being around the people who I have been around for so long and who have gotten to build lasting friendships with that are I hope gonna expand beyond this um just because you see each other on a regular basis and you kind of get to know each other beyond just what your skills are. What will you miss most about being at the signal? Well, yeah, as I kind of said already is like, I'll definitely miss, you know, the people that I've gotten to work with. Um, you know, as stressful as this job can be, um, it's also very fun. Um, just because in the midst of everything, that's maybe chaotic and crazy and deadlines and all that stuff. Um, we can always find a way to make each other laugh um, and to just enjoy the moment. And so I definitely think I miss the people. Lindsay, definitely one of those people. She's been there since day one for me. Um, Talene, another person who's been there since day one for me. They, you know, believed in me before I really believed in myself. Um, they gave me an opportunity and they saw something in me that I didn't see in myself at first. Um, and so that's definitely something that I'm going to walk away with, you know, very grateful to have had. Um, but it's also sad because it's like, you know, it's the end of kind of this chapter of my life. And now I'm having to pick myself up and move on, uh, which isn't easy, especially given the current COVID circumstances. Um, but I think at the end of the day, it's definitely the people that make it count and make it matter. Um, you know, people have come and gone, you know, since I've been there. Um, and, you know, there's been some that are like, it's tough, it sucks when they leave. And so to be the person now leaving, it's like, well, that sucks because it's not like I'm just losing one or two people each semester. I'm losing a whole group of people who uh, I've constantly been, you know, in contact with and then work with. And I think that, you know, I'll be friends with, you know, hopefully a lot of y'all, all of y'all uh, uh, throughout my life. But I, I mean, I, I'm not naive enough to think that it's not going to change in some ways. Um, but I do hope that it stays similar in a lot of other ways as well so yeah definitely the people all right thanks guys for listening uh it's been a great three years doing this podcast and uh hopefully it'll be picked up again at some point if not it's been a fun ride and uh continue to check out the signal thanks